Santa Rosa plum. Almost ripe. Pretty close to being ripe, which is great. This is a beautiful, fast growing tree. First couple years didn't get anything because it shot up like a rocket. It's probably 14 feet tall and it loves this heat. Tends to do really well. I did some graphs this last spring right here. It's called the uh, schoolhouse plum right here, here and here. So these are all still growing nicely from the graphs. The fruit is from the Santa Rosa. And if I come down here, here we have um, a graph that didn't work, the Inca. This didn't work here, but this Inca graft did work. So I have a couple that are growing there and I will free up some space. So trim this down so that I have more room for the Inca to grow. And then over here, we have Howard's Miracle Plum, which I grafted last year, not this last spring, but this last year. And look at this fruit, yes. I have a couple there, a couple there. So first year after grafting, I have two, four, six, seven pieces of fruit on here. Aphids, not really a problem on this tree. I mean, I get a lot of aphids, but I was able to clear them out this last year by incorporating some predators for the aphids. And I had no sign of aphids in here, but I don't know why these leaves are curling here. There are no aphids that I can see or feel, but um, there's a little bit of curl on it. It has been a really good tree, easy to grow. It is my pollinator for all of my other pluots and plums, and it, it grows really well. The fruit is very nice. See, you can see it's almost ready to eat here. Look at those plums. Man, so good. Um, the nice thing about this tree is its fruit is pretty sweet. And then you have just a hint of tartness at the end, which I think is great. It's a good little balance of tartness. Look at all the fruit that's growing on here. All right, Santa Rosa plum. I'm gonna show you my other tree. This is a plume cot. I didn't really like this plume cot very much. Um, the fruit just doesn't taste the best. It's very tart, a little bit of sweetness. I like the sweetness. I'm addicted to sugar. But a good growing tree. I've tried to graft on this so many times and this last year is the first time that most of the grafts held. So here I have an Ozark right here. This graft took and here's another Ozark graft. So this will fill in this whole entire side. Um, I don't know if I like Ozark or not, but I thought I'd give it a go. Here's another one that I grafted. This is an Emerald Beauty. A little bit of growth there. You have to clear this branch after, um, after I take the fruit off of it which is fine. There's just so much fruit on this. It's a very prolific, but they're very small, almost crab apple size by the time that they're ready to take. I mean, look, it's the size of my thumb. Not very big fruit. I don't know what variety of plume cot this is. Um, oh, and on the back side, I have a Jefferson plum that's right there that was successfully grafted. This one, not successfully grafted, obviously, because it's just two little sticks. Beyond that, um, I'm gonna change the scaffolding of this tree because I wanted to make sure that these graphs held. But that's the plume cot. And then if I go over to the pluots, four in one. So it has four graphs down at the bottom here. This is the flavor supreme. And look at the size of that fruit. Man, um, it's definitely not ripe. The flavor supreme turns into a very dark color when it's ripe. And these things are already very large in size, which is great. Here's off to the right hand side is the flavor king. Look at all this fruit. I mean, seriously, 
What the heck? I need to take some of this fruit off. These branches are just gonna die. But flavor um, king, and then over here, the flavor queen. Make sure that you plant the flavor queen on the north side if you're rotating the four in one because it is a vigorous grower. And here it's on the south side and it's just getting all of the sun. So I have to maintain this size because if you look at the size of the Flavor King versus the Flavor Supreme, the Flavor Queen is just vigorous, very big grower. But fruit set size, nice. This is a green Pluot, it's supposed to be really nice tasting. And down here is the Dapple Dandy. The Dapple Dandy died back couple years ago. If I show you right there, there's the, the graft is back down here. You can see this is new growth off of that same graft. And it came down and um, I trimmed it this last spring back here. And now this is all new growth that is coming down the edge. So nice. Uh, this is the Toke Plum. It's having a hard time this year. I don't know if it's just because the heat, the fast growing nature of it. I did graft a golden nectar here, golden nectar plum. It's getting a little bit of sun scald. And then uh, Luis, Luisa graft right here. So there's a Luisa and the toca plum. Toca plum's really good. I like it but I thought I'd try those other two varieties. And back over here, that's the Flavor Grenade. Flavor Grenade, here we've been hitting temperatures of 105 degrees. Um, this had some fruit on it, but I wanted to focus on growth this year, so I took the fruit off of it so it could grow. And there's a new shoot that's growing at the bottom. The chickens got around it and were just eating it alive, so I have to retrain it. Right chickens, right girls. And then if I go back here, here is uh, three other pluots that I've planted. Dapple Dandy I didn't get good reviews on or didn't read very good reviews. So I thought I'd just stick with the flavor queen, which is in the back here. Look at how big that is. That's the flavor queen. That was planted a little over a year and a half ago, I think. I mean, that's huge. It's 12 feet tall. This is the Flavor King. The fruit on it is very small, smaller than my foreign one, but this also has only been in the ground for a year and a half and it is about eight feet tall. And then here's the Flavor Supreme. Flavor Supreme, the fruit is not as big as the other Flavor Supreme on my foreign one, but it's getting there. It's starting to grow in size. And then my other plum tree I have on the back side here. This one I'm really excited for. I just planted it this last spring and look at how well it has grown. It's planted between two huge trees. This is a peach. This is a nectarine. Uh, There's the first year that I'm getting any nectarines off of this tree. It's been in the ground for almost three years, I think a rose nectarine and I did some grafts on it. This one did not take obviously, but I have some other grafts on the backside that took. But this is a gauge. Rene Claude Doré. I'm butchering that because I, I really should sit there and memorize this stuff. But good little growth on it. It's growing good. And then up on the hillside, I have a couple more plum varieties. Let's go check them out. Here is the Burbank plume cot. This is its first year in the ground. Trees of Antiquity is the one that I purchased it from. Good growth. It's already seven feet tall and um, growing really well. This I'm going to train as an espalier. So it will go wider. I'm just waiting for these to get long enough so I can trim them back, which will probably be this summer, and then train these to go laterally. But I want an upward shoot and then also go lateral. This is the Sugar Twist Pluary. First year on the ground. First year, and look at this fruit. It's doing so much better than the sweet treat. 
Sweet Treat has no fruit on it this year. Also, the Flavor Punch, no fruit on it. The Candy Heart Blueberry, that thing is just busting with fruit. Totally busting. Look at that. Here's the Pluot Splash. This is supposed to be one of the best tasting Pluots available out there. Um, can't wait to have some, but I'm also going to do it Espelier, just like the Pluary that's over there. Um, who knows? Maybe if this guy produces a lot more, I'll do some graphs off of it and put it on the ones that don't really produce much fruit. But that's why I'm testing this out. I want to see what trees are the most productive, which have the best flavor and taste, and graft and determine all of that stuff by growing it, because I don't know unless I grow it. This last one, this was planted last summer, and it's the Elephant Heart Plum. It's supposed to be one of the largest plums that you can get. It is a grower too. So here, I'm also going to train it Espelier. It's about time because the branches are a little bit loose, so I need to clean up some of this, but I'm gonna train this Elephant Heart and hopefully this next year we'll get some elephant heart. Uh, and then, yeah, these are two apriums, but these three pluaries that are at the top there, that's it for the plum varieties that I have in my orchard. But it's a really good, really good fruit set and variety that I have going on with these pluots and pluaries and plumecots and plums. Man, so good. This really is, um, spring fruit is awesome with the sugar twist. Sugar twist, I think this is the variety that you can get in stores. I put these nets on them because the birds and squirrels just eat them up. They love them before they even get ripe. And I don't blame them. I love them too. So I would eat them all. But anyways, hope this tour was beneficial for you. Yes, all of these plums grow very well in temperatures that are in excess of 105 degrees, sometimes 110 degrees. And look at that. It's so big. Holy guacamole. Next to my pomegranate, this pomegranate bush was has been in there for seven years. And that flavor queen, Pluot, is huge. It's bigger. It's crazy. Anyways, hope this was beneficial. Have an excellent day.